Hi guys, welcome back again to the channel and to a new video. If you're wondering what happened behind me, yeah, yesterday one of my dead monitors decided to die suddenly, so I'm waiting for a replacement. Anyway, in this video we are going to have a look at Fedora 33 which was released a few days ago. I'm gonna give you my thoughts and I'm gonna install it here in a slightly different way than you are used to see. So let's get going. So let's go ahead and install Fedora 33. Now in this video I'm gonna install it a little differently and that is I'm gonna use another installer which is called Fedora 33 Everything. And I wanna thank Leslie in the comments of one of my videos which pointed me to this alternative download. So I can show you here the website. You just go to alt.fedoraproject.org and you scroll down here until you find everything. This is for experts only, and it differs from the usual installer for Fedora, which will install the system with the GNOME desktop environment, in that it lets you choose from thousands of packages to customize your installation. It requires a fast network connection because it's basically just a net ISO. So what you can do, you can download this and burn it to a stick, or just download the ISO and then boot it up on a virtual machine. And let me pull over here a machine which I already prepared for you guys which is right here. And let's go ahead and install Fedora 33 with this installer. It's gonna differ in a sense that it's gonna allow us to install several packages and also many options during the installer itself. So it's gonna take a moment here to boot up the Anaconda installer. So this is the first page of the installer. This doesn't differ from the normal Fedora installer. We just need to select the language. So I'm gonna choose English and click continue and this is where things get interesting because the installer here is completely different it's very similar to what we have in centos or in red hat linux enterprise so let's go ahead and configure our system the way we want to i'm going to select here for the keyboard another one because i don't have an english keyboard here so i'm just going to select mine and remove the english keyboard and the internet connection is already available because it's wired. If you have Wi-Fi, you can configure it in here. I'm gonna change the host name here to Fedora 33 and click apply and click done. And let's go ahead and see here what we have. So installation source is the closest mirror, which is fine with me. And then we have our software selection. So when I click here, I can choose how I want to configure my system. So I can install Fedora as usual as a Fedora workstation with the GNOME desktop environment, as a cloud server with KDE, XFC, LXT, LSQT, and many other desktop environments. Now, what I'm going to do in this particular video is to choose the basic desktop, which is going to install the X window system with a choice of window managers. And we have here on the side additional software for selected environment. And from here, I'm going to choose Xmonad because it's going to install several window managers, not only Xmonad, actually. And this is going to do it for me. But I encourage you here to go ahead and explore other options if you want to install, for example, the Cinnamon desktop environment or others. So I'm going to click Done. And we need to also configure the installation destination. And if it's okay for you to have automatic storage configuration, you can just click done. If you wanna customize it, you need to click custom and then click done and you will be able to create your partitions. In my case, I'm just gonna choose automatic and click done. And then I can define also the root password. So let me type this in and retype it again. And we have also the option here to lock the root account or allow root SSH login with password, but I don't need this, so I just click done. And the last thing, I can create already a user here. So I'm gonna type in, in here my name and choose my username, make this user administrator and select the password for it. And then I can click done. So my system is now configured and I can click begin installation. Now this is gonna install around 800 megabytes of packages and it's gonna take a moment here. So I'll be back with you when it's done. So there you go, the system is now installed and we can reboot it. So let's click Reboot System. It's going to take a moment to do that. And let's hit Fedora here and see what happens when we get to the Display Manager. And there you go, we have LightDM here. And let's click here on the top 
And as you can see here, we have several window managers available. Now, I'm not going to explore all of them. If you are interested in doing that, you can go ahead and install this edition yourself and try them out. I'm going to choose i3 because it's one of the most popular. And then I'm going to enter my password here and hit enter. And we need to create the configuration file for i3. So I'm just going to hit enter here and hit enter to have the configuration file using the Windows key as a mod key. There you go. And we have i3 here in Fedora 33. So if I hit mod enter, I have urxvt as a standard terminal. Now there are a lot of things here which needs to be configured and I'm not gonna spend too much time on configuring the system because this is really bare bones and it's not the purpose of this video. But nevertheless, let me actually change the terminal to make it a little bit more configurable as urxvt takes a little longer to configure. So let me type in here, sudo dnf install. And I'm going to install Terminator here and hit enter. Enter my sudo password. It's going to take a moment the first time here to synchronize the repositories. There you go. So I'm just going to accept the packages. It's going to take a second to install here. There you go. And we can also change this in the configuration file by typing in nano, which is now the standard editor in fedora.config slash i3 slash config and hit enter. I'm going to search here for terminal. And again, if you want to have more infos about i3, I have already tutorials on the channel for that. And I'm going to replace here this terminal with the terminator and remove the rest. There you go. And we can save this file and exit nano. We reload i3 with mod shift R and hit again mod enter. And we have Terminator here up and running. So I need to find out the name of the monitor with X render. And you can see the monitor name is virtual one. So let me type in then X render dash dash output virtual dash one dash dash mode 1920 per 1080. This is the resolution of my display. And there you go. We have now our display up and running. So I need to put this, of course, after in the configuration file. Otherwise, I will need to reset this every time. Now, let me go ahead here and configure very quickly Terminator. I'm going to go to Profiles, deselect the title bar here, and then I'm going to go to Colors. That's going to be fine. And the background, I want to use Transparency, and I'll go to 85%. There you go, and click Close. Now you can see the scrolling bar is gone here with the blue line indicating that the next window is going to be open here, but I don't have transparency. Let's try to close the terminal and start it again. Transparency is not working because the compositor is not installed. So we're going to do this afterwards. But the first thing I want to do here to configure is to actually install also nitrogen for our wallpaper. So let me here increase the font size and type in here sudo dnf install nitrogen and hit enter, enter my sudo password, and it's going to take a second here to install it. There you go. And while I'm at it, actually, I'm going to install also Firefox. Accept the package. It's going to take a moment here to download and install it. And there you go, Firefox is installed. So if I hit mod D, I have D menu there. I go ahead and open up Firefox. And I'm going to go here to search for an image. Let's type in wallpaper. I'm going to select Japan, as you know, my favorite country. I'm going to close the terminal for now. And I'm going to change this to English. And I'm going to select here, let's say, this one right here. And I'm going to select the photo. And click download. Download full resolution. I'm going to save it. There you go. And I'm going to close Firefox. Close the tabs. There you go. I'm going to open up Nitrogen. And I need to configure it. So I'll go to Preferences. I'm going to Add. Add the directory downloads. Click Select and click OK. Select it. And then go here to Zoom Fill. And click Apply. And now we can close this up with Mod Shift Q. And we have our wallpaper there. Beautiful. Now a few steps here if you want to configure i3 in Fedora, just to show you how you can do this. I'm going to open up the terminal again and install also a compositor. So I'm going to type in sudo dnf install. I'm going to install pycom and hit enter and enter my password. It's going to take a moment here to download and install. 
it's not a big package. There you go. Now we have an example configuration file for PyCom in the system, but I don't know what it is, so we need to find it out. So let's type in sudo find slash. So searching in the root directory, and I'm going to search for a name, and the name is PyCom, and hit enter. You can see the documentation is here, user share doc PyCom. So let's go there. Let's type in cd slash user slash share slash doc slash PyCom and hit enter. Type in ls and you can see we have here the PyCom sample configuration file. We need to copy this into the Etsy XTG directory. So to do this, we can type in sudo cp pycom sample.conf and we're going to copy this under slash Etsy slash XTG and hit enter. Now let's go there. So let's type in CD slash Etsy slash XTG and hit enter. And let's edit the configuration file. So let's type in nano pycom sample.conf. And I forgot to use sudo privileges here. So let me go back and correct this by typing in here sudo. And this is the configuration file that we need to rename afterwards, but because I'm on a VM, and especially on KVM, if you're using this on KVM, you need to deselect one option. So let me search for vsync and hit enter. And what we need to do here, we need to basically comment this line. So we need to disable this function and select this one to say it's false. Then we can save the file and exit PyCom. And now we can move or rename pycom sample.conf to pycom.conf and hit enter. And again, I need to have pseudo privileges. I always forget this. There you go. And we need to put this also, of course, in the i3 configuration file. So let's type in nano.config slash i3 slash config. And I'll go down here at the end of the file. And I'm going to enter here a couple of commands. So the first one is the pycom. And the command is exec pycom f for fade. And I'm going to make sure that it's running in the background. I'm going to add also the nitrogen to have my wallpaper when I reboot i3 every time. And I'm going to type exec nitrogen dash dash restore also in the background. And the last thing is the resolution. So I'm going to use the same command I used before. So I'm going to type in exec x render dash dash output virtual dash one dash dash mode 1920 per 1080 and also in the background. There you go. Then we can save this file and exit nano. We need to exit once i3 with mod shift e and click yes. And let's enter the password here. Just want to make sure that i3 is still selected. There you go. It's still there. So we can click logging and you can see we have the full resolution. And if I open the terminal, I have also transparency. So everything is working fine. Now let's go ahead and see what's new here in Fedora. Well, first of all, let me type in, in here nano slash Etsy slash fstab and hit enter. And as you can see, one of the new features here in Fedora is the BadRFS file system. So starting with Fedora 33, the ButterFS file system comes as default. Now, as you can see here, it's not that developed yet in the sense that the options are not many. Actually, there are none, basically. So we cannot use several features of the ButterFS file system. But Fedora also said in the blog post that those are going to come in future releases. And this is serving mostly as a base from where they can start developing. And if I may say, this is a typical Fedora approach. Fedora is usually a very balanced distribution, and they are normally not coming with new features which are going to change the distribution completely. So it's clear that they want to go to the BadRFS file system with more features in the future. But I think it's a very careful approach here to start just with the file system itself and then expanding over time. For me, this is a typical Fedora approach, and I don't disagree with it. Fedora has always been very stable. They are always choosing very carefully which packages they want to install, and this is no exception to me. So the ButterFS file system is actually a nice addition, in my opinion, and Fedora will implement more features in the future. So I'm looking forward to see how Fedora 34 is going to be running underneath. Now let me exit this file here, and let me close this window and open up again Firefox because I want to have a look actually at the release notes for Fedora 33. So let's type in here, Fedora 33 release notes, and hit enter. 
and I'm gonna go here with Fedora 33 is officially here. This is the blog post. And I know there is a link here for the release notes, which is right here. So this is a very important document that I definitely recommend you to explore. It looks somehow that there is nothing in here, but this whole documentation refers to the changes in Fedora 33. Now, for example, for system administrators here, there are several changes. If we check, for example, the installation option here, we can see what's new. For example, the boot partition can now be on BadRFS. We have also the installer now runs ZRAM generator instead of its own implementation of the ZRAM service and so on. So we have here a lot of things that we can check if we are curious to know more about the changes in this distribution. Now, I'm not going to run through all of those, but if you are interested in knowing more about this, I definitely recommend you to explore them. So let's go under security. You can see here we have, for example, Fedora 33 disabled TLS protocols, versions older than 1.2 and many others. We have also some changes for the networking. For example, here application that use network security services now supports SQLite and the DBM file format. And we have also some news here for storage. We have, for example, Stratis, Stratis 2.1. This is actually a very nice local storage management utility, which I'm going to explore also in Arch Linux very soon. And we have also here some changes for the system utilities. As I said before, now Nano has been set as a default text editor. And we have also some changes for the desktop user. So if we go here, we have some options for internationalization and also for the LXUT desktop environment where we have new plugins is added for changing this playback light and so on. And we have also some changes here for developers. As you probably know, developers use very often Fedora. So there might be some changes here that are interesting to you. And we have also some common bugs that will be probably fixed along the way. So I encourage you here to go ahead and explore this wiki. I will leave a link to the video description below so that you can go there and explore for yourself. But you will find here everything you need to know about Fedora 33. For me, one of the biggest changes is the BadRFS file system, which I'm very happy to see in Fedora. And I'm really looking forward to see how they will develop. Now, this version of the installer that I showed you is, again, the everything installer, to which I'm going to leave also the link in the video description below. And as you can see here, you can really test out many window managers and you can fiddle around here and customize it the way you want to. So this is my installation of Fedora 33 with window managers. So if you try this out, let me know in the comments below how it's working for you. And if you have any other question about Fedora 33, let me know also in the comments below. And if you have questions about the i3 window manager, look also in the channel. I have already some tutorial for it there. So these are my thoughts about Fedora 33. I always liked Fedora. It's very stable. And I like the direction that Fedora is going to with the BadRFS file system. This is just the first approach, in my opinion, and with the next releases, we will surely see more what BadRFS can do on Fedora. But let me know what you think about Fedora 33. Let me know in the comments below, and I hope you liked this video, guys. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and subs to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website, or you can donate your PayPal through our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.